Today, we are doing a YouTube Shorts Roast. Today, we have John Yushai, who is our head creator advisor here at TubeBuddy. He's worked at YouTube. He's worked at Instagram for over eight years, helping creators grow their channels. And you know what? He is the person that we really wanted to bring on to talk to you all about YouTube Shorts, because last year, he did over 100 and 60 million views on his YouTube shorts. So we're not gonna waste time. Today we're gonna be roasting your channels. This is going to be honest. We're going to be, you know, it, it might hurt a little bit, but at the end of the day, everything that we say to you is going to be extremely helpful. So that's the goal of today. Go ahead and bring on John and let's get this thing started. What's up let's guys? Go. We. I want to say thank you, Judah, for the kind intro. And if you guys are in the audience uh, and you want to get roasted, put your channel a header or channel name. We'll look it up. And just know this is not for the faint of heart. We yeah. are going to be uh, straightforward. We're going to be candid because I know that's the kind of feedback you guys want. Um, mm -hmm. And so here we go. Let's go um, into our first channel. Let's waste no time. All right. Let's waste so, no time. Thank you to Mr. and Mrs. Global um, for submitting their channel okay so first off i want to get into their channel and then i want to actually watch a bit of a video because that's where i think you'll get the most value it looks like they're a travel couple but right here i'm seeing some like shots of france i'm seeing them cooking together it seems like a couple's channel but um i want to i want to really dive in and watch one of their shorts let's see this one that they recently uploaded oh my special little guy Okay, if you're familiar with The Simpsons, that sounds like Marge Simpson. I think a lot of these yeah. sounds, like we, we, I think Jude and I need to have like a Ten Commandments of shorts because this is becoming a common Ooh. one. Think about stuff that is on Reels and maybe even TikTok as native to those platforms in terms of what works versus shorts. Like in so many ways, this looks like repurposed. And I think wave one of shorts was people being like, oh, I could see the watermark. That's not mm. YouTube. And I think wave two of shorts is, wait, that's like a trending sound that is not exactly native to YouTube. That's a meme. It's short. I would really think about, is there something where you speak more to camera and you mm -hmm. could highlight your personality more than just a meme? But let me see. Maybe this is a one-off and I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. So let's go through. Here we and, go. and just for those of you who are joining us now, so we're going to be roasting your channels just to get started off. We just pulled two channels that from our audience is submitted to us. But if you want to get your channel reviewed, just start dropping it in the chat so we can review yours next and give you some great advice for how you can grow with YouTube Shorts, especially because next month you're going to be able to monetize them. So we're going to help you get to that point where you're going to get 10 million views every 90 days, which is crazy. Let's do this. Yeah, it's uh, like February 1st is going to be a big day. Dude. Let's watch um, this one that I think is maybe a different. Uh... I was hoping this would be something else. Am I giving this a second chance? I think like if I am Mr. and Mrs. Global and let's take a look at your long form content, I really would say if you're focused on travel, if you're focused on uh, eat, eat, like like food content, give me a, a, a an explainer, a DIY. Like I think a lot of this stuff here. Here's a um, thing to think about. If you're not talking as much in your videos, how are people going to be able to connect with you as much? Right. If you're really like being another um, uh, notch on a trend, which is okay, it's a way to get audience, but it's not a real way to deepen the relationship. I see a lot of stuff here. You see like couples like cooking videos, which are a popular form. There you go. You even have like a podcast that looks like, why not delve into those and even look at your t retention curve and see here are moments from this 21 minute conversation that have peak that people are going back to watch um, that you may want to clip. I think sometimes people overthink it and they think shorts is such a departure from long form, but it's not. Uh, I think they should be interconnected. And I think there's a stat that a, a strong, strong percentage of folks who watch shorts actually use that to discover long form. So if your shorts are over here and your long form is over here, that bridge is not going to be as clear for people to discover. Mm. 
I think we've roasted this one to a crisp, Judah. Let's keep it going. <laughs> Let's keep it going. Let's keep, Let's it, keep going. it going. And I want to go to the next channel that's submitted. And then I'm seeing you guys in the audience. Um, and we'll get to, to as many of you as possible. So, all right, here we go. Yeah. Uh, next channel, homemade recipes. Okay. Big channel. All right, first of all, I like the header because I immediately know what I'm getting here. It's much more dialed in and directed um, than the last channel. Um, I just want to give a shout out to the Nomadic Nutritionist. Hello, all bro and sis world. Roast us. I bet you can. I bet we will. Just wait. <laughs> Indeed. Just wait. Um, the best fried fi uh, uh, pizza. <laughs> I want to talk something. Uh, I want to talk about something that a lot of people miss with shorts, which is the first frame principle. I, 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 I coined this because I think a lot of people don't think about the first frame of your short as important as your thumbnail for your long form, but it is. Think about all the content setting up in this video and ask yourself a question Does the first frame of your short set up the story and expectation for what people are going to get? My, my answer to that right now for this video is no. It doesn't because we're not seeing the food as much. And we saw it for a very short moment in the beginning. But let me watch this and I'll give a better idea of what the first frame should be. Poi ci mettiamo un po' di pistacchi cotti. A questo punto io prendo un po' di pepe, ma giusto per eh? questo punto lo mettiamo qua. Ok. So when you're showing an entire list of things, and this could be a food tutorial, it could be you're you're like trying to show a workout. Um, anytime there's a list of things, you want to have a bit of a flash forward in your reels. And as I'm looking at this right now, it's moving too slowly. So let's go back to the yeah, first frame as it comes to the end so here. And, and I didn't even know you were, like, I didn't even see you in this video. And there's an outro. Okay, so let me, now, now that I've watched the full video. Here we go. So you started off with her holding the plate of the thing being finished. And mm -hmm. I like that you ended with the end result. But then you immediately went to what I would say is one of the more boring parts of this video, which is just somebody talking in a kitchen. If the video is going to be about them making the pizza, then at least make your first frame about that. Like I'm thinking something with a little bit of like like the, the pizza is almost made so you know what it is. It's not just dough and the chef right there and maybe you in the frame as well. So we're seeing this through your perspective right, right now, seeing some. this almost looks like a vlog. And if this was 20, 2017, I'd say bravo. Now in 2023, this is not really, and we want to make sure that as people are scrolling, you're saying, hey, I want to catch your attention, show you what this video is all about. Um, I have one more thought, but Judah, anything that pops out for you? Yeah, yeah, just like in my head, you know, I think sometimes there's like this missed opportunity because there's this, like, who's that guy who makes the ice cream? Uh, I forget his name. You, you know exactly uh, what I'm talking about. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dylan LeMay. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and and yeah. I just think about like, this is a this intro is a story, right? They they start talking, but I feel like this shot, like you said, is just the more than the more boring shots. Like we could have got right into the cooking, and we could have listened to the audio of her like explaining everything. In, in my opinion, um, just and to me that would would have just easily made it more interesting for me. Totally, totally. And then and then and then I think we've like beaten the intro to death. But like I love ice cream. Thank you, Clash Smash. That is a. Uh... You, you, you and I are on the same page there. Um, and then the outro, like it was like a two second thing. It was like full screen. Like, uh, let me see if I can scrub ahead. I, I can't. But essentially, like there's this entire full screen thing. Too much. I'd say your mm -hmm. outro, like think about it as like as the video itself is ending the story. Put a little thing at the bottom and like subscribe, mm -hmm. have a click. Um, I've been doing that on a lot of my videos and it's working well. Um, but you don't need to take up the full screen about it. Think about think about this. One second, two seconds on a short, that could be like many, many percent on retention. Mm. And as soon as that starts dipping, the entire video starts dipping. So you're actually shooting yourself in the foot more than you probably realize with that right. kind of intro. And I'm, I'm seeing everyone in the comments here like, 
people do that way too much. So take a, a close look at your intro and make sure you're not doing that. Um, so you're in better shape, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, just to, yeah. yeah. Just like to like reiterate that point. Cause I felt like I didn't explain it too well, but like, I guess when I see a YouTube short, you know, I, I see like it really not even a YouTube short, really any video, Like I think it needs to be highly consumable if I had the audio off. And then I think it needs to be highly consumable if I had the video off and the audio on. And so like, that's where Dylan, I feel like is, is a, is a master at it because like you listen to the audio, it's like, oh man, this is an interesting story. You watch the video. It's so compelling to watch. And then when you marry those two together, you have this phenomenal piece of footage, this phenomenal piece of art that they put out into the world. And like, I think that that's what this video is missing is like, I think there's some shots that are interesting to watch that are not being highlighted right away. And then the audio I think, I mean, it's not in my language. So I really don't understand, so I have to read it. But I'm sure that there's the audio is interesting. And we could just make that the highlight. But I think just taking the best of both worlds and then putting them together is the best approach to me, for sure. Uh, I agree with you, Judah. I also think one thing to add on to that is not just yeah. like the, the two-layer story. It's also the perspective. What Dylan does, and if you look at Dylan LeMay, he's putting the camera on his uh, chest right here, and you're seeing him without any like like camera involved like basically mm -hmm. two hands in the film and so right. you're essentially living it as if you're that ice cream scooper you're working at cold stone or you're working at his new um ice cream shop in new york so i think about um like what makes something interesting i think about that a lot and i think it's just where do cameras uh, where can you put the camera that the human eye usually doesn't see right that's interesting right and so, like, it was there a way where you're, like, in there making the fried pizza with them, and then you put the camera on a just, you could literally take one of those, like, tripods that, like, have the bendy arms, put it around your mm -hmm. neck, you'll look silly, but then the camera <laughs> will point down at the pizza, and then you're putting on the cheese, you're putting on the sauce. Right. Um, and, and again, this is universally applicable. If, like, you're putting together, um, like, a, like, a, uh, um, like, a, like, like, like building blocks, you're making something that's like a um, craft, like, you can be putting it together and have the camera on you. And, and again, people are right there in the first person POV, like, it, like it's a video game. It. Yeah, so I love it. I love put your it. camera where people don't usually put their camera and the human eye doesn't usually see. So, yeah. um, Good job, uh, Vincento uh, um, Plate. I think I think you're you, you definitely have your niche, and you're definitely a big um, YouTuber. But I think that you're leaving a lot of potential on the table mm. um, with shorts. But it actually, goes to show if somebody that can still do much more than I think creators of all says is have an opportunity here. Um, ready for the next one, Judah? Let's do it. All right. What so, are everyone? So just yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No. I, I think there's some confusion on where to send Everybody people's on. videos. So if you want your channel reviewed right now live, send it in the chat. After the show, we do have a link where you can submit your channel that we can start off with, like the other channels that we started off this video with. But if you want your channel reviewed right now, drop it in the chat. And that's where we're going to be pulling them from. Yep. Yep. So, all right, this one comes from the creative technologist. What, what are everyone's two favorite letters right now? I feel like it's A and I with all the chat GPT, like, <laughs> uh, like, like, uh, um, you know, craze going on, all the people like trying to think about how to use chat GPT. So um, the creative technologist, uh, he sent, he submitted this um, ahead of the stream. He started a channel and um, this is actually more of a podcast. So I know that we're talking a lot about shorts and how that's coming to fruition, but I think it's also valid to still like think about like the intro of long form because a lot of that is going to be important to hooking your retention. So let's talk about this because I also know people have podcasts in the audience um, and 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 talk show formats. So I want to give feedback. And I see Flexer in the comments says, "I want compliments." That's not what you're getting on this on this show. We're we're, we're roasting and we're we're keeping uh, uh, we're keeping it honest. Okay, ready? So here we go. All right, the creative technologies is the generative AI hype reel here. Malavel and I'm Hilmar. Welcome to the Creative Technology Podcast. No, 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 no. First of all, I like the Chicago Bulls. I like the Chicago Bulls um, sweatshirt. Uh, being from Chicago myself, but immediately those are three seconds that are wasted. If you're mm -hmm. saying "Hi, my name is," "Hi, my name is," welcome to the blank podcast. I don't need to know that right now. I'm if I'm somebody who's clicked on a thumbnail, I'm about to tune into your show. I want to know what is the topic of that video. Like I'm, I'm looking right here. You're about to tell me what the podcast is about. Um, 
podcast where we explore the ever growing intersection of creativity, technology, and culture. Hilmar, tell us about yourself. No, no. Do you currently work as a research director. Contextualize introductions. I think that so many times people start talking about themselves in a way that that makes sense and ultimately will add to the video. And I think you have a lot of impressive um, uh, background here. Uh, between you and Hilmar to share in the conversation. But if I'm a viewer, I want to know what does this have to do with me and the thumbnail and headline that I just clicked on? Like generative AI hype reel. Is it for creators? Like, am I going to learn from this video? How to use AI as a, um, as a, as a creator, um, then, then, you know, like, uh, uh, that's something that we should take into account. And I also want to for shorts, um, cause I believe you have a few here. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. And it's, it's interesting that these shorts already look like they're from the podcast. So mm -hmm. I, I think these two can, can um, work together. Let's see. The heart of it all, they've got Unreal Engine. And given that they're minting an absurd amount of money with Fortnite, they progressively decrease the fee. Feedback right now, you're too small up above. I would punch Agreed. in about 30 to 40%. We want to see your facial reactions. Like there's way too much going on for us to see your background. Uh, which I would take a look at Judah's videos. His background always looks clean and there's a oh, light man. in there and like, it's uh, <laughs> like, take a look at that. There's some like, I think you did like, you know, the best forcing function for cleaning up your house is one, having a friend over and two is filming a YouTube video. Um, exactly. And I would think there's a bit, bit of clutter that can be removed, just a bit, but you've done a good okay. job, but I would punch in regardless to hide it. And then I'm almost seeing a few different fonts. Like here's a subtitle font and here is the, like font of the like actual like um, b-roll but i would have yeah. actually moved yourself to the bottom and move this to the top because ultimately the the um on mobile where people are consuming it the most there's going to be a ton of that ui that's at the bottom and if you want to think about what's the most important part is it your reaction or is it the stuff that, pe that you're talking about reacting to i would mm. assume the latter um, and I would say maybe you don't even have to have your face on screen as you're talking. You can just splice it in in a few moments. But this immediately, I would, I would change up um, to, to help with retention. Ease of Unreal Engine itself. They've got a bunch of different plays in the space. There are I would have used editing to like, like basically zoom in like Prezi style into the dis different parts because that much text and that much of a diagram in a short vertical while you're talking, overwhelming overwhelming obviously doing pushing they've got a store where you can get the butian you've got on services that give you all the other identity building blocks that let you jump across these experiences fortnite is this one amazing example that brings together i also think his volume could be higher it just seems I, like I, the, the leveling is off of it john i'm gonna ask you a question because I, I i might be a little a little dense right now do you yeah. know what he's talking about yeah, he's talking about Unreal Engine, um, which is this, okay. this, this gaming software that allows people to build worlds from scratch. Okay, yeah. <laughs> as, as long as one of us knows what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah. Because he lost me at the inch. I'm like, what? 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 I, I was confused. I don't know what we talk about. But go ahead. Let's, yeah. let's roll. Exactly. And I want to acknowledge Box to Box says something. Actually, I love that people are acknowledging and talking about our last. Um, um, live stream. So yes, last time I did say, because I think there was a creator who put a bunch of watermarks in their video and they put mm -hmm. their logo and I say, your face is the best watermark. So mm -hmm. it, it, it still is. That's still true. But, but that doesn't mean your face has to be in every single frame of the video. Right? Mm -hmm. I think that like you're, you're there, you're up top. Like I would have had just a full screen now that I see more of the video and I would have had that play and as you're saying something important, I would have cut back to you full frame, mm -hmm. vertical, like cropped at the sides there. And we would have been able to just see more of your, um, more, more of your, your, your expressions full frame. And we would have been able to focus on actually the contents of the video and what you're reacting to full frame during those moments. So good question. A good clarification, uh, clarification box to box. Um, roast me already. Woe is our, we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, okay, here we go. The building blocks inside of Epic's ecosystem. And of course makes that very interesting. Okay, I think we've roasted to this one as well as this channel and yeah. a bit of the long form. So let's keep yeah. it moving. So more people, um, more people drop go through. Okay. your channels in the chat. Here we go. Here we go. All right. 
pulling them out. We got some here. Thank you, Carlos, for pulling those channels Carlos. out. Thank you. Um, Clash Mash, I see you. Flexer, we see you. Uh, all right. All right. Ooh. 2K E, the best funk remixes. Does anybody <laughs> have any idea what a funk is? Please, somebody drop the definition to that in the chat. I don't know what that is. Please, oh. if there's a word, okay, there, unless this is such a niche community that you're like trying to be like, do that insider outsider thing, you got to explain what 2KE and funk means because I just think that was a typo. <laughs> It's probably not. There's probably a whole community um, of funk enthusiasts that are just like raising their pitchforks right now. But um, we got to explain that. Okay, so let's go to their shorts. Interesting. Mr. Beast meme. Mr. Beast meme, please. Let me take a look at your popular. Wait. Huh. Hmm. This is very different. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let's, let's look at this Mr. Beast one here. some context here because healthy tiffany just helped us out so it's um it's a it's a style of popular dance music of african american origin based on elements of blues and so everybody's typing so fast and it's moving and having a strong rhythm that tip okay it's a type of music i guess type of music, type of music. let's just well, let's just sum it up like that type of music. yeah and i think that that it's it's uh, like I'm obviously being facetious when I talk about what is funk, but I think if it's not something that the majority of people know, and it's maybe your mission on your channel to educate people, why not put in a little bit of description? Or let's just go back to the channel banner because that's so important in terms of the perceptions. It, well, this looks like we're in outer space, like with this little purple haze and all that. Yeah. If it's really about music, maybe put a little bit of imagery here of the people playing the instruments that that musical genre is all about. Um, I just think it's missing a lot of context and um, maybe there's the people like Tiffany who know what it is and will be more likely to subscribe, but why not try to reach people who don't know about it, but could, you know, um, let's watch John, one. Can you, real quick. Yeah. Can you go to his long form video? I'm just trying to get a feel for what is this channel about? So it says the best funk remixes. Okay. Yeah. So you want, you, you want to watch the Mr. Beast funk rap? Let's please, please, let's please. Do that. Okay. <laughs> By the way, I'm, I'm noticing one thing as we click on this because this is six days old, and I would have given a pass um, uh, 2KE if you had uploaded a long form that was this, you know, short, uh, like four or five years ago before shorts launch. But I would really think about like, could have this been a, a short if it's a minute 38? Could you have shaved off 38 seconds, or could it have been more of a of a deliberate long form where it's over five minutes at the very least. Um, I think as shorts become more popular on the platform, you have to think about your long forms as diving deeper into the pool of what they are, which is trying to um, um, be a five to eight minute video at the very least uh, to differentiate. Let's watch. Just uh, got paid, boss. Now you know, I have the premium on my other. <laughs> Oh, we have good we comments. Did, did. Perfect. Like, hey, you're up here. Welcome to your final test. I'm Mr. Beast. We can scrap the yes, because I've never missed a beat. You had to cut from honey under threat of a. Okay. W one, I would have definitely had lyrics on screen for this. I, I can't fully make out what you're saying, and it looks like you put a ton of words uh, a ton of work into the words um mm -hmm. second thing again retention tactics and and thinking about like what works with your music videos has to play a part that's just the reality of youtube and i thought it took a long while to get into the beginning of the song um and if you even think about it there's a lot of like songs today that because of like how spotify works how streaming works they bring more of like the chorus part the hook in the beginning of the video. So I would have thought about that here too. And any music based creators, I would rather really relate to. Them. 
Yeah, I don't yeah. understand. Yeah, there's, there's I, I can't a, hear it. Yeah. Um, Sharika, uh, uh, Shakira Love and Money says, how do you put lyrics on screen? There's a ton of good apps for that. Captions, literally the name of the app is called Captions. Helps with that. It auto-generates and then you can fix it. Um, but there's a lot of apps that, for that, right. that that allow, um, yeah. Didn't realize this was a genre. Interesting. Exactly. Spike Way, we're on, we're on the same page here. Um, okay, I think we've roasted this one uh, as well. Let's keep moving so we get to as many people in the chat. Um, all right positively angela here we go here we go angela all right thank you 2ke i know we kept it uh harsh but hopefully that's helpful um i think you have potential but those are some things that i would think about immediately in terms of how to improve your youtube channel okay hello and let's take a look really quick so we see flowers looks like a drawing immediately right off the bat angela i'm thinking like you're an artist who draws flowers but I'm saying that very literally because I, I don't know if that's what your videos are going to be about. I'm just telling you what I think your channel is about from the impression that you've set um, mm -hmm. from all this stuff. So let's go ahead and um, let's find a short. Okay. Here we go. How your past? Okay. When you recall... Okay, remember, first frame. What are we saying here? This is covering your face. You're off center. Most of us are living in the past. Okay, that's an okay declarator, de declarative statement that um, if I were doing that, I would think about something that maybe is a bit more contrarian, that is something that I'd be like, whoa, that's interesting. I, I, I don't know if I agree with that. I think most, you know, there's a lot of people who talk about not being present focusing on the past like so let's see where this video goes the memory you have to feel the way the memory made you feel back then angela uh, just, I'm, go, you're about to say exactly what i'm about to say go you, ahead. Go ahead. you go ahead well, well, you go ahead well i'm bothered by the fact that she's talking and the text is still over covering her face 100%. at this point a hundred percent a hundred percent. The other thing I was going to say is like, I think that many times like, yeah, like on these talking head clips, you want to give an introduction of what it's about, but put that at the top and then you got to put subtitles below. If talking is the predominant thing you're doing in the video, then you, you need subtitles. There's, there's no way around that. Um, and I would even think about like bringing in B roll and like cutting and, and, and also like, it just looks like the camera quality is very low. Um, and these are things that like now in 2023, there's a lot of cheap, affordable cameras with higher quality than this. Um, and even like phones. So I think maybe it's your settings. If you can't like get a better camera, like really focus on your lighting, just literally get in front of a, a, a window. And I think it'll be much crisper than this, but let's keep going. When you recall the memory, you have to feel the way the memory made you feel back then. Angela, you have a great voice, by the way. I think I think like that that is de definite positive, like very soothing, very um, ca compelling to listen to. When you recall the memory, you have to feel the way the memory made you feel back then. When you oh. recall oh. the memory, that's <laughs> that was. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, wait, did I just hear it twice, or are you just emphasizing it again? Um, I thought that was the same. <laughs> oh my god! Oh man! I before we talk about that, like, I I think just there's a lot of opportunity mm -hmm. for B-roll, like you said. I think mm -hmm. there's sometimes it, what what's being said in content and what's communicated visually. There's like this disconnect here. Where it's like, if I wanted this to hit harder, throw up some visuals that hit me harder, uh, because just this, 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 just the shot isn't isn't doing it for me, to be honest with you. But but and it's an easy fix. It's like you know you don't you you could take this same video, take it down. I mean, unless you're worried about losing uh, what's on it. Um, but like I would just enlist it and just repolish it. Put some B-roll on it and see how that performs. Like it's it's some easy wins like that that are low hanging fruits, and I mean like I think Pexels P E X L S I think how you spell it is like a free stock footage site where you can just enhance mm -hmm. some of this just for no bucks at all. A hundred percent. Yeah, I I would I would 
totally agree with that. I would try to recut this and re-upload. Um, positively, Angela, I see you're in the chat. And also, I, I see a lot of people commenting and giving their thoughts. Like the more you guys comment and, and help out, the more we'll try to pick out the most active folks. And it's really cool to see people who are hopping in this mm -hmm. um, in this live stream, like now for the third time as we're doing these roasts. Um, so see, the other thing I'd say on top of this is, Angela, can you give an example from pop culture or a movie of something that like, living in the past or like is there a movie reference you could say because then you're able to latch onto the search interest by putting that in the headline so um i think about that a lot too it's like can you say something different and can you say something that makes it more relatable and has mm -hmm. a, a bit more mass appeal without losing your focus so let, let, let's just see maybe that's a one-off i do want to give the benefit of the doubt but i'm seeing okay this one looks a bit better um what constitutes a woman of high value. We should have saved that second off. Yeah, the we beginning. Should save, we should have saved. Sh 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 cut that. Cut that. Yep. But already, I, Angela, I see like when we right. when when we see your, like your full facial expression versus the previous one where the, the text was covering your face, um, it's already more compelling. The lighting is better here. I think it's a bit shaky. Like I would have just put this on a tripod because. I think it's like, is this a vlog that we're about to see? You're about to take us on a journey or are you talking to camera? The the subconsciously, we've seen so many videos now that things trigger things in terms, things tr trigger expectations in terms of the movement in the video. So I just think about that as well as anybody who has a talking head, but. What does she bring to the table? Is she not submissive? Is she too masculine? Is she not feminine enough? Do we even know what those things mean? Or are we just regurgitating information? I encourage you and I invite you to sign up for this workshop of becoming a woman of high value. What makes you a woman of high value? The quality of your thoughts. Okay, I think this would have benefited, this video would have benefited a lot from like some type of introduction of like the seven principles to live by. One, this. Two, that. Three, that, like, like I don't have a sense of structure in this video, so I'm losing you. Um, even though I think that you're speaking like uh, to camera and 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 you're 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 like um, uh, uh, sharing your ideas like in, in a very compelling way, but the way they're structured is and the way the editing is just one shot the entire time is losing me. So I think about that, and then the the workshop plug. Um, it's always a tip off because the second you start to plug going to some other platform, people will stop to watch the video so I, I would even think about if this is seven principles to live by you say one of them is like community to get ahead by the way we just launched a workshop check out the link in the description and now point seven is this so you kind of keep moving along and then people who are really interested like will hit the description and we'll continue watching so be careful about your call to actions when your short form um retention is already you know like like it's a very delicate thing given how um quick these videos can go by and, and just real quick, yo, I love doing these streams because your comments fuel ideas for future content where we can go back to some basics because, you know, I'm hearing people ask in the comments, what is B-roll? Um, mm -hmm. Wow. So, yeah, so I'm, a, I'm sorry. I, I think may, may, maybe we're, we're going too yeah. far ahead here. Go, go, but, go uh, ahead. That's that's but, a great catch. Yeah. Yeah, but like, it, it actually, it, it was positively Angela who asked what was B-roll, so that's why I want yeah. to highlight it, especially. But essentially, like, my definition would be it's like that supplemental footage that you weave in between your main footage. So, like, mm. this is your main footage. What we're seeing right now is your main footage. It's like those scenes that you cut away to. Like, if you're watching a YouTube video and they cut away to, like, their hands doing something, them opening the fridge, you know, shots of uh, like, you know, a drone shot as the audio is still going, as other things are still happening. It's just adding additional shots and scenes and footage that you can either create yourself or pull from third party platforms that will, you know, give it to you. Like, it's just like you would pull like music. Um, but yeah, ho hopefully that that cleared it up. Yeah. Good, good going back to basics. Uh, Random Gamer 428 says B roll is like when NASA is doing a launch countdown, cuts the stories about what the payload is. Um, mm. What the payload is, I'm not sure I, I fully get that, but essentially, yeah, they're cutting to like like people in like the, the main A roll 
is the rocket taking off and the b-roll is the people in the command center the people talking and all that so it's like switching between the shots so angela like right. i think like like it, it would benefit not that people don't want to see you but it's like you know the human eye like needs to see a bit more variety um especially right. in today's day and age and also you know we're visual learners that helps us like that helps your message go further mm -hmm. um but yeah okay here we go so next video next channel Oh, and the other thing I'll say is now that we've watched a few of your videos positively, Angela, um, your channel header doesn't match. Your channel header of flowers and all that may feel on brand, but I want text there. I want to know what your video is about. All right. All right. When to love 1982. Oh, wait. The thing is not going through. Here we go. Boom. Wait, why is it not going through, huh? Uh, let me see. Yeah, for some reason, that link goes to the homepage. I'm going to try to troubleshoot that one, uh, but then we'll go to Dominant Media. There we go. Okay. Oh, this is okay, interesting. I, mean, I, 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 I think this is the best channel header we've seen so far. We make animated shorts. I see your characters. I see your style. And I get what you are. Great. Mm -hmm. This is awesome. Crisp to the point. Really strong. Okay. Now, let's uh, go ahead and watch your shorts. Let's, we're going to have to put in that work. Hey, you ain't about to walk my street like it's a free ride. You have to put in some work. Uh, Ma'am, I'm just trying to get home. What are you talking about? Mm-hmm. You got a pretty face. You're going to make me a lot of money. I'm okay. You have a good night, though. Oh, I wasn't asking. Ma'am, unhand me. I will call the cops. Call the papa, huh? I hate when y'all heifers get out of line. Hey, you ain't about to walk Okay, okay, okay. I have some thoughts. I'm going to watch one more short from you guys. Great Caesar's ghost, Batman. There's the Joker. What you are, chum? No, it's curtains for you, clown. Well, if it's an bat brain and boy blunder, give me your words. <laughs> oh, I'm Robin Goku. I'll be right behind you. Coming, Batman. You know what? What if we, uh, actually, what if we change things up? You know, a little well, bit. Well, you know, what? Uh, what, what if you went in first, then and, uh, and then I came <laughs> behind you? You know? Robert, what is this all about? I want a gun. Uh, what? Word, mate. Great Caesar's ghost. Okay, this is great. I'm going to meet you. Kudos to you guys. This is a... Uh... This is really um, compelling stuff. Okay, first off, um, subtitles on the shorts. Like, is this dialogue heavy? Even though your visuals are awesome, I need to be able to just visually understand what they're saying in addition yep. to this. Um, the second thing I, I like to say is, like, I think that you guys have a very distinct character here. This this almost, like, um, Doughboy-esque uh, animated character that would be interesting to see in different contexts of like trending moments. Like I think mm -hmm. this one kind of catches it where it's like Batman and Robin, but I don't know that Batman has been relevant for a bit. Like I think that it was about a year ago that the last movie came out. Of course, Batman is always relevant in terms of how popular he is. Um, yeah. In, like, you know, um, in pop culture. But um, I think about, like, are there specific moments that are happening on the news or that people are clipping right. that you can then take and then put into your caricatures? Because it almost looks like The Simpsons, where The Simpsons, like, yellow, like, distinct, like, artwork, like, can, like, like, get, like you could Simpsonify somebody. I think you could dominant mediaify somebody or something, just like you did with Batman or Robin, but give it a bit more of a mainstream appeal. Yep. And then it looks like these are a compilation. And this is interesting. Let's Let's see. You suck. You really, really suck. Wait, that's really... Is this something... Huh. Did they make this? Or is this a scene from a Marvel movie? It... Looks like it's maybe made... There's a huge departure from your thumbnail from what the actual video is. Like, if I'm looking at this, I think it's a cartoon. And then I click on the video... And I'm like, wait, which one is which? Like, uh... Yeah. Uh, I mean, that was 12 seconds, too. I mean, that could have been... Yeah, I didn't see a lot we of... Need, we need to <laughs> What's that? I said, we need, a, we need to get YouTube <laughs> Premium. I know, I know, I know. Or I got, yeah, or they I got made it. Account. They made it, man. That's a compliment. The, the fact that we couldn't tell the difference, that's impressive. <laughs> It is, it is. Um, but it also, 
I think it loses the potential because I think um, dominant media, like it's almost your work is so good that I'm like, was that, was that bootleg? Was that something Ooh. that they, that, that they clipped from a movie? Um, yeah. I would like some context. I would really study if I were you guys corridor uh, digital and Ooh. look at their um, uh, videos about how they keep the artwork and the CGI and like the future of film and cinema, like the main topic but their personalities are such a big part of the channel that you can't help but love them as well and and just want to listen. So I think about, I see some of your personality coming through, but I would like a bit more of that. Also, the, the thing I, as somebody who, like I, I've, I've spent many years actually like making cartoons, putting them out online, and I looked into animated videos for a bit, and I know your cost per second is through the roof compared to somebody who can look at the camera and say something. So I almost think it's to your benefit, like cost wise to say like, here's like our team, here's how we're like thinking about making these characters and all that stuff. And here's the final result um, for your long form, at least. And then for your short form, you just show the result or you show a bit of the clips that you've had. But um, think about like, like ways that you can add to your videos, especially the long form without needing to add to your cost because these animations are probably taking a lot of time and a lot of money mm -hmm. and they should still be the center of attention, but like the corridor digital work, like, you know, their, their personality is a big draw of that channel too. Right. I think, um, I think his name is J Jake Fellman. Uh, he, he blew kind of blew up a while back making like these really interesting Minecraft sk skits, I believe. I think mm -hmm. if you're looking for like another creator, it was probably really similar. Like he's a good one to study. He was like pulling like a hundred million. <laughs> like let me see what what his channel is doing right now. But like he pulls in crazy numbers, and he was pulling crazy numbers, um, with this kind of similar niche. But I, I know that well. this. Go ahead. It it's called Jake Fellman. Yeah. And he just like he just like blew. Yeah, that's him. I, I remember that logo. Forty. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like he he blew. I don't think he has many long form videos at all. Like he completely blew up because of shorts making Ooh. these animated scenes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, that, but, that is uh it's very soothing to watch. There's only a component of ASMR there. Uh-huh. But like you know, Whoa, just like these, these Among Us ones are wild, crazy, crazy. <laughs> Judah, this is such a great example to bring up because I think he's doing what we were saying that dominant media should do. Like the, Among Us, like I assume this came out about a year ago or so when the game was big, um, was all anybody was talking about. And here you are making content about it using your animation style. Like this, I'm not surprised. Oh my god, 270 million. Good look. Oh, that loop! Oh, good, snap! Good loop. <laughs> Damn. Oh, my gosh. So, so dominant. we're at dominant media. So, like, I'm bringing this up because, one, I think that any, you know, Ali Abdal, a few creator day streams ago, he said something really interesting. He says, you know, as a new creator, sometimes it's good to imitate, then innovate. And I think that there's yes. a lot of great examples of dope creators who figured out the sauce figure things out that we can we can learn to mimic a little bit so we can learn our our route figure things out we can learn what works we can we can re, you know reverse engineer and i think that this is a great creator to start looking at because like dudes that like 14 million subscribers purely based off the strength of his shorts Purely yep. based off the strength of these shorts, so clearly this is a this is a winning strategy that he's using, um, and, and, and you have the skills to create something similar. But like even with this Among Us example, like I think, like there's so like you said, John, there's so much opportunity to do like trend jacking here, where it's like yeah. what's popping off. You know, a couple months ago was um, that. Uh, that Netflix show with with the dude who would buy beer. What, what who, who 
did some bad things. I forget who, what his name is. You know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, Dahmer. All I saw in my feed was White Lotus. So. Right. No, like Dahmer was super big. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You yeah. could have made some interesting stuff there. Like I remember like seeing the TikTok where it's like when 21 Savage and Drake put out that song, everybody uh, got on that meme and started making things. But seeing it through like the perspective of like these animated characters would have been hilarious. So I think there's, there's like a lot of opportunity where you could see like, hey man, what's popping off? What are people really creating and doing? And one, you can trend jack there, but you also have this unique opportunity to take something that's popular, that's happening and make it completely different because yours is anima animated. Like, 100%. It, like nobody can really compete with you. Like you're like, I, I cannot do this. Like 99.99% .99 of people is not your competition. Like you could find a strategy and freaking win because nobody can even enter this marketplace because the cost of entry, the, the knowledge, the skills that are needed to enter this, you know, to me, it's unattainable. I don't have the time to freaking learn how to do what Jake Bowman does, but I will watch it because it's satisfying. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm also seeing comments of like, that's an awesome loop. And I'm also seeing Shakira ask, what is a loop? A loop is the end of the video matches the beginning of the video. Simple as that. And specifically the last frame. So you saw the last frame was this yellow guy getting on top of the bigger yellow guy. And then all of a sudden we're back at the beginning. And that's effective because, you know, a lot of people don't like the, 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 uh, people have gotten smart to realize what's the end of a video and then swipe off. So I think by a loop, you also like get people watching again to be like, wait, how did he do that? Even if they're conscious of it or you get the people continuing watching because they're not fully conscious of the fact that the video just started over again. Right. So that's what a loop is. Great question. Right. Um, and it eliminates that like it helps to eliminate that like drop off at the end. Like I, I love it when like. You, we didn't see it coming. You know what I'm saying? So I look at yeah. a lot of like our retention graphs for shorts that you saw it coming. And it's yeah. like, oh, huge dive, huge dive, huge dive. And to a degree, like, you know, sometimes like that's always going to happen. It's the end of the video. But it's like, as you start, you know, the, with the ones that we do that loop on, you start to see that beginning rise up to like 200% <laughs> at the beginning, which is nutty. And then it's just like, just, increases that levels it out at the end too it's just it's just crazy how effective that loop is um and when they're satisfying i want to like i want to watch this again because i want to see that loop again because it was cool so you, you just it's just bringing that to the table really does a lot uh-oh um there we go oh, preparing the other short um, here we go. Uh, Judah, what do you think about I have a submission from a creator who there's they submitted a short form, but it's on TikTok. Um, you think that's fair game to review? I think it's still a short form. We're taking it, creators. It's, fair, you game. Keep it's fair game. It's All fair right. game. All right, here we go. Here we go. Because okay. I know this Kelly, creator wants to come to YouTube. What's that? I said, I bet this creator wants to come to YouTube anyway. So. <laughs> yes, <Yeah, it's> <laughs> everything going on. So this is, this is Kelly Ward. And this is a TikTok about Pap's ribbon. So PBR. Um, I got it from my brother that he just saw my artwork, but he lives. Okay. Here, zoom in. Okay. All right. So I just got a call from my brother, and he is is, is the opening. Here we go. Two thousand miles away. So you know, let's start. I got a call from my brother that he just saw my artwork, but he lives two thousand miles away. So I had no idea what he was talking about. Turns out he was driving along the 210 in LA and bam, there was my artwork on a massive silo off the expressway. For context, I wore a Pabst Blue Ribbon contest. By the way, I, I think I think the way you're talking to camera and you're bringing the artwork is really compelling. But I think about of all the things you just said in that first 15 seconds, what is more interesting that you just got a call from your brother and then you're about to explain that he saw something or um, the fact that you had your artwork on the highway? I would have led with that. Like that's, that's the hook of the story so far where it's like, um, my brother saw my artwork on the highway. Then I'm like, okay, wait, why is your artwork there? Like, like it was, it was, it, did somebody like rip it off and put it there? Did you, did you, uh, buy the billboard because you're an entrepreneur or you have a business? Did you win some kind of competition? Are you an influencer? Are you so, my mind goes in so many different directions that I want that answer, um, to the question that you're about to tell the story of versus like. I just got a call from my brother and he lives very far away. I'm like, okay, all right. Like, I, I think there's so much more compelling 
uh, parts of the story, Kelly, that I would have started is. Okay, but okay. So going back to you won a contest from Pabst Blue Ribbon, right? A few years ago where my design was on a bunch of PBR cans. Whoa! That is so cool. Like, I, I would have even led with that. This is like, my okay. The, the, I would that even better say, be another short. That That's a story in itself. <laughs> that's amazing. I, I think you totally buried the lead, Kelly. There's something here that um i would have just especially like again first frame the visual of like i would have even said here's like what like, like i would have held out the can like this and maybe like you're in your um studio or wherever you're drawing and i could see like a pen and paper on the ground with like sketches and crumpled up paper that shows like the drafts that took to get here but this is i mean this is incredible i i just think that it's too far into the short to hook people as they're scrolling but let's keep going okay back to the Story. I asked my brother to exit and go take a proper photo of the silos. He tried to, but he got turned away by the security guard. He told the guard that I made that design. He even showed the guard my website. The guard said that was cool, but no can do. Keep it moving, bud. So we were out of luck. But thankfully, we live in the time of Google Maps. So I was able to virtually drive through on the 210 and grab some screenshots. Here's some pics. Pretty cool. If you're in that area and you see the silo, take a pic. Tag me in it. Okay, wow, that is so cool, Kelly. That your artwork, and that's a very smart. That's a very smart uh, 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 campaign by Paps Blue Ribbon. Let me just go back to the video so that's on screen. Um, but I think you bury the lead, and I would have led with one of two things. One, um, you said billboard initially, but I think what maybe was more accurate is that it was like part of a um, like the side of it. They basically. Um, replaced it there and then two that you were actually on the can i think both things would have been more compelling versus it seemed like what the story was focused on and maybe you had another short that was focused on the actual can the silo etc but it seemed like it was too much focus on like your brother driving to take a picture which um i think a lot of times like people are like oh, i need to create like a tension and hero's journey and and all this stuff and add personal story no the story is there it is you getting on that can. How did that work? How did you get that arc? Or what were the what was the submission process like? Like my curiosity goes there, not to this whole journey of your brother trying to get a picture and then you doing it with Google Maps. Like that is nowhere near as interesting. Right. And just a compliment to add on, because I'm a big fan of personally, I'm a big fan of the content that people you can see a lot of intentionality i can talk to my brother the, today he just saw my like arm. when she held out the phone with the you know that she created uh like my website sticker on top of it stuff like that to me like i really appreciate when creators put that kind of level of time into making things more interesting where it's not just like oh i'll just do it in post like i, I think casey neistat is a great example where it's like He'll do stuff in the frame that makes it more interesting rather than just like throwing it in post and, and trying to, oh, let's throw it in post and do all this stuff. But but something about seeing her on the screen doing all these things, all these motions, pulling out these props and stuff, I think that's really cool. And I and that really engages me as a viewer. Uh, Judah, I agree with you so wholeheartedly. And I would say like I think because so many things are digital, we crave like something that looks physical. Like I'm thinking about Casey Neistat's videos where he writes on his hand right. or he like shows pieces of paper. Like, you know, again, it's this whole principle of like when the industry is zigging in one way, how can you zag in another way? Exactly. And I think about like, you know, it looks like like your um, designs of that Paps Blue Ribbon can were available like to purchase. Could you have purchased a, a lot of them? And just like literally the opening shot is like, I designed this video. Or, I designed this. Um, artwork and and I, I just think Kelly, there's so many things about your background as an artist and designer that I'm curious about that are basically shoved to the side because we're hearing the story about how you couldn't get a photo of it. Like, right. um, I would have leaned into like, how in the world did your art end up on that can versus how is your brother going to take a photo of it? So mm. great stuff yeah. here. I mean, this is th that 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 was really really cool to see. Um, any other thoughts there, Judah? Uh, yeah, I'll bring this up because since we're on this subject, but like I remember listening to Eric and I think it was Eric and Ryan Trahan speaking mm -hmm. like one of their creator now um, um, calls and they were talking about like the way that they like to use B-roll and 
you know, you said it perfectly about how like you see people go in one direction and then those creatives who really stand out start going the opposite. And it's like, in their case, they, they were talking about how like Eric, who's like, yeah, man, like I won't use B-roll unless I like, like, unless it's like custom, unless I'm like making it custom where it's like, you know, like these shots that she's putting in, you know, everybody can go get stock footage. Everybody can go get these funny memes and stuff like that. But, you know, like, let's just say Ryan Trahan, you'll notice like in his video, he'll cut out his head. He'll make all these custom animations that that's his B-roll, but it's like, it's very tailored to him. He'll throw like a childhood photo of him and like drag it around the screen and move it around where it's like, oh, wow. Like this is very unique to this creator. This is very tailored fit to their video. And this is not just some B-roll that they got offline. Um, and I think like, back to that moment where she held up her phone. I think just having stuff like that really makes you, to me, it just makes you so much more interesting and makes your content really stand out to me because it's like, oh, I've never seen this before. I've seen B-roll in videos that other people had. <laughs> like, I've heard songs and videos that other people have. But, like, there's elements that you can bring in that nobody has, which makes it cool to me. Oh, John, you're muted. Oh, sorry, I was muted. Um, I think the other thing I'd say is, because uh, I want to continue on to all the folks who are um, putting their channels in the chat for roasting, look at Matt Diavella, and he records a ton of his own B-roll. And then what's really interesting is that he always wears the same shirt in his, like, explanations like his straight to camera so it almost looks like he filmed everything in the same day but he probably filmed that b-roll like months before and is using on many different videos so um it's just one other thing that in 2023 as like you know a lot of stock imagery and video sites has become more popular you got to differentiate and people just want to see you more than like you know like a a, a cutout or, or something that feels too sterile so 100 percent right. agree um Let's go to Lunchbox World, Lunchbox Co. UK. But uh, Kelly, that was that was awesome. I feel like the, these past two have been really strong and have potential. This is all about like um, polishing it in the right. Okay, Lunchbox World. First off, LunchboxWorld.co.uk. Okay, um, take a look at the sizing of your channel. I take it that you probably were optimizing for mobile or it looks like it's cut off even if i move the screen big and small so um a lot of the visuals that you're putting in here are not um showing up properly so really think about that and then give me something else beyond like the website remember like youtube is its own destination like you don't want people to see this website and then go off you want to say something about lunchbox world like what is it are you, are you like like let me give you the perspective of somebody who knows very nothing about your channel is just on it right now are you a food shelter? Are you a channel that helps give recipes for moms to help their kids have better lunch boxes and healthier lunch boxes going to school? Are you a meal prep uh, channel that's helping people really think about how they could prepare for the week and take a lunch box to the working world? I have no clue. I have no clue. A little bit of text and how often you're uploading would have helped a lot. Um, okay, here we go. And now looking at it, healthy snack ideas for lunch. Yeah, so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a lot about that. But let's go to your shorts. Hello, hello. This is Karen. No. Hello, hello. This Karen, is the Lunchbox Lady, and I'm the face behind Lunchbox World, the YouTube channel. And we we don't need to know that in a short, and it's implied. You're speaking on the account. Uh, you could have just put your name on the bottom, and we know this is your channel, right? Um, unless somebody took it over and is sending a message to your followers, we know. We know this is your channel. And if you are packing lunches regularly, whether it's for you, your kids, whether you're working from home, check out the website. Check. Out <laughs> We're going back to the website, but but I, I want to know what this channel is about. I want to be able to subscribe. I think, thank you for being so active in the chat. I think a lot of times, um, you know, people use principles that maybe worked on YouTube in 2015, like going even back like 2014, uh, like, okay, YouTube is a place to promote other platforms. No, no, not anymore. YouTube is its own platform. People come here as a destination. You can get paid, you can get monetized, you can build a business off of it. YouTube is embedding so many different ways to sell stuff um, on your channel directly. So don't try to move people off, especially if you're new. 
check out mm -hmm. the YouTube channel. We're Lunchbox World and we upload fresh ideas every week. And also make sure you hop over to uh, lunchboxworld.co.uk and grab your free Lunchbox. I have a question, Judah. What's the last website that you went to that you typed in? That wasn't a social media. Bro, site. oh my gosh, John, I love you because I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> Even when it was in the banner, I'm like, I'm not typing that in. Like, that's not how I literally was thinking that. Like, I'm not typing that in. It is so <laughs> small, so easy, but it's just friction. Like, it's friction. so much friction. If I'm on my shorts feed, like, think about it, I'm on mobile, full screen shorts. It's not like there's a bar at the top for me to easily type it in open it in the job like you want me to close down my app move over and search for you i don't know you at all and really all that this has told me so far is like go visit this go visit this with like why why what why should i visit this and so i'm looking for content that satisfies me where i'm at that inc that educates me where i'm at uh -huh. um, and right now i'm on youtube you're asking me to go to this other site that's not YouTube. Let's scroll to the next video. That, that's just how I see it. If I'm just going to be completely honest with you. No, no, no. I, I think that's spot on. And it's something that like, you got to be very selective. Like I'm talking to lunchbox world right now, but I'm really talking to everyone in the chat and listening right. to this on the recording. Like you only have so many times that like, after you build an audience that you're like, Hey guys, go check me out here. Go buy this and all this. And when you're building a channel, you want to be like, Hey, subscribe watch my next video. Like I would make sure your right. call to actions are centered within the platform, not off the platform. So um, it, I see a lot of that here that I would change. Um, Lunchbox world. I, I keep calling you Lunchbox. What's your name? Let me see. Hello. Hello. This is Caroline. The lunch. Caroline. I see you in the chat. Caroline. Caroline I hope that feedback makes sense. Yeah. Um, but kudos I, to you for defining a niche. Right. I, and I'll add on to this. Like when I see our videos in our shorts or like, like, I always think about like how can we like increase that viewing session for that user, like how mm -hmm. do we continue to propel them deeper into de deeper and deeper into the the rabbit hole of YouTube, because you know as I see it, I feel like content that helps people move along into more content is successful content in YouTube's mm -hmm. eyes. Content mm -hmm. that gets in a way of them continuing their session on YouTube puts them in other places, gets them to stop that viewing session. Like abruptly, because of your content came up. If if I'm YouTube, I'm seeing, oh, every time a person watches this person's video, they immediately leaves the platform. Mm. I, that we gotta cut that video. We gotta cut that video. So that that's just how I see it. Yeah. And one other thing I'd say before we get to the next channel, listen, I think Elon Musk has said a lot of things about Twitter, but a lot of other social media platforms just either I've been thinking about it for years or we'll start doing like he said something where, you know, if you put links that take people off of Twitter, we're not going to prioritize those as much on Twitter itself, or we're not right. going to even allow you to link to them. Um, think about it. Like platforms or businesses. That's a, that that's a, that's a move that makes sense from the business's standpoint to keep eyeballs there, like add more impressions, bring more advertisers in help creators, etc. cetera. Um, so just, just think about that as you're trying to move people off as well as, um, all the friction that is the reality of coming to an app and wanting to spend your leisure time um, in 2023. So that oh, is boy. Uh, what the the site. I can't even visit the site. <laughs> World.co.uk. Bro, oh my, the site's down. It, oh man, come on. Oh I man, love, I Caroline. Love you, Caroline. I'm just, I'm just. Oh. The site, the site is down. I'm disappointed, but just oh, it, oh look, 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 God. look, and, and I gotta, I gotta be nice now. These are easy fixes. Fix the site, fix the video, keep it on the platform. Like all what we said is a is a way of communicating those ideas to you. Yeah, and congrats, Caroline. I see my video two days ago got over 500 views in 24 hours. That's good, but I think these changes um, can make it better. And and. Uh, We'll, 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 we'll keep tabs and, and join us for the next one where hopefully if you improve, we could take a look at it again. I love the support mm -hmm. here. The goth farmer says, congrats. The website is live. I just checked. Well, we, we, we typed it in. So something about World. that URL. Is co. UK. Yeah. Type yeah, it's taking me, not taking me anywhere. Yeah. Um, all right, let's go to the next video. Um,
I have, I thought this one would be interesting. We could take a, a, a bit of, uh, let, let's see, let me. Um, I had, we all knew that January was. Okay, I had this one coming. This is a, a long form. We could just watch the beginning of the intro and then look at short form. But this is about the new YouTube update about the profanity um, and how did you follow this, um, uh, Judah? Like YouTube basically tightened the rules. Around, oh yeah, we, like, we got we got two videos out on it so far and a short upcoming. Yes, sir. Give, give it, give it, give it. it. Give a summary for folks because th oh. this is about to get very meta. This guy's video, who he wants yeah. roasted, is about the change. So maybe explain right. the change and that'll make more sense once we watch Yeah, yeah. So just like to give a general background. So YouTube updated their policy for what's considered advertiser friendly. So of course, YouTube has partnerships with advertisers who want to show their ads on videos on their platform. And they have a set of guidelines that controls what's considered advertiser friendly or good for these ads to show on. So they have some new rules. So things like, you know, they have a new rule called this enabling dishonest behavior. So if you're making videos that are encouraging or enabling people to do dishonest things, um, they're not going to allow you to earn uh, ad, ad revenue from it. An example of that that they used is pretending to be a retail store employee or staying in businesses after hours. Uh, they updated their policy toward game violence and, and, you know, different things about gory gameplay and, you know, things like that. But most importantly, the one that's really triggering a lot of creators is they got real stricter on profanity. So in the past, you could, there was like different levels of profanity, less extreme, more extreme. But really right now they say, no, you cannot use profanity in your thumbnails at all. You cannot use profanity in like the first eight seconds of your video at all. And if you use it consistently throughout your video, we're going to demonetize that video. We're not going to allow it to earn ad revenue. Um, and consistently throughout a video is not clearly defined either. So th there's just a lot, there's like eight big changes. So these are just three of them, but some of them are, you know, there's one for, you know, where harmful acts directed at minors, like not having minors in harmful or dangerous acts. Like there's things like that, that like, okay, we, we I think we could all agree that that's okay. But then there's a, a few like this uh, profanity one that creators are like, oh, oh, YouTube's telling me to censor my content and they, you know, blah, blah, blah. We, we get the idea. If you haven't seen the video, watch the video. I posted it like two videos ago. Yeah, yeah, check those out. I think it's important to keep in mind. And I know at the end of the day, like, self-expression is important um but there is like the rules of the platform and, and what you have to take into account so i think uh judah summarized that really well and this video is about it. so let's watch a bit of it and then we'll take a look at their shorts also judah i'm noticing we're we're already over the hour mark time is just flying should we do oh man we, how yeah, more go ahead. Do to close it out it's up to you man it's up to you um let's do let's do i i, I always go overboard so let's do three more so this is one okay and then we'll do two more sound good let's do three more yeah. And, and real quick, just to just to add on to that, just real quickly, I know I, I don't want to people to go away, but the advertiser friendly guidelines are different than community guidelines at YouTube. So YouTube's not saying you cannot post these videos to a degree, to a degree here. YouTube's saying advertisers don't want to show their ads on these type of videos. So you have you have this option if you want to just, hey you know, preserve your creative freedom and post what you want to post that falls within community guidelines, feel free. But if you want advertisers to to want to post their content, this, honestly, this is kind of like the advertisers here saying, dictating this. Um, you know, it, you can't be too upset with YouTube, in my opinion, but go ahead. Absolutely. Oh, I love box to box. So you, you, you're just driving the best comment. One day we should all look back at this video and see how far we've come once we're monetized. I, I love that. Love it. That's one day soon, especially with the February 1st changes. Okay. All right. So all that context is watch the intro of this video from CreatorPad. It was a tough time for YouTubers when it comes to... Let me start over here. So we all knew that January was a tough time for YouTubers when it comes to monetization, but... By the way, I just want to appreciate this set. I think like, it, I feel like I'm on the couch, like talking to you, like hanging out. It feels casual, but professional at the same time. Uh, nice like background ground lighting here like a little bit of like branding with this like mic like audio sounds crisp good job i think initially like i'm drawn in and i could tell like you spent time on this uh it looks good wow so in my original script i was gonna say god 
goddamn instead of wow. But I can't say god because of what YouTube just did. And what they did, they didn't even do it out in the open for all of us to see and know what, what what's going on. Instead, they did it by good zooming in and out uh, and and right now right off the bat i have a few questions i'm like are you about to like dissect the way that youtube communicated the update or are you about to dissect the update for me to understand i don't know where this video is going and the title doesn't help like like i would have said like if again we're only 22 seconds in and if there's confusion where the video is going i think that's a big reason why it's leading to drop off and i either would have help the headline be more of your introduction of like what creators really need to know about YouTube monetization update and then maybe put in parentheses like the profanity like something about that so we know what you're talking about or two if you want to make this about how platforms should communicate to creators because you're making that point right now how YouTube should have really updated their monetization policy I would argue maybe that's less um, compelling because as a creator I want the information to be relevant to me and my channel but I just want to point out that I think the clarity here is lost and that's probably why you're seeing people um, you know dip off because again you lose people and you confuse people is kind of like the motto behind closed doors as per usual I don't know. I'm going to say as somebody who worked at YouTube, like they have so many updates that they're launching and they basically have so many different channels. Like this was put out on the creator insider channel and, and probably cause the holidays are, you know, I, I don't want to play defense uh, here for them, but, um, it, it like, like it, there, there's a lot of reasons why like certain launches don't get as visible as others. Um, and for this one, like, like maybe they, they could have like, like posted or tweeted about it more, but, um, right. I don't know. I, I I'm like uh, I'm. I, I think there's there's more caveat here than a lot of creators right. bring, and I think sometimes like a lot of creators have said this. Maybe there's a different take you could have offered um, that would have maybe had this video like stick out. But again, this it could be going a different direction. Twenty five seconds in, Judah, do you have thoughts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think yeah, this was kind of like a lot of people missed this. You're right, and I think like even our video, like we first made a video when we first made a video about these changes. It was on December 9th mm -hmm. and we didn't, I didn't start hearing creators talk about this till mid January, early yeah. January. So, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, I, I think that, yeah, you're right. Like they did put it out online. They did talk about this. It did go out on Google. Maybe there were other ways to do it. Um, but I think, yeah, you're right. It did all happen around like Thanksgiving and then Christmas coming up that a lot of people missed it. Yeah, I think a few creators made videos about like like how this is going to be hurting their and limiting their self expression. And I, I want to say like Integra DIY said so YouTube is run, run by computers; they only favor big creators. That's not true. Like YouTube has one of the biggest partnership teams, and I found that they actually reach out and give a personal touch in addition to uh, being a platform where you could upload and have like um, their discovery engine like help you out. So I think once you get to a certain level, and that's not even big. Like you know. People get partner managers as they grow in the in the tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of subscribers. So um, I, th I think there's more nuance here, but that would, that's what I would say about the introduction. And then, so then I'm immediately seeing like if your thing is called Creator Pad, it's probably for, for creators. I would have made more of your intro immediately about here's what you can do about these monetization updates, and then been very like practical. And then if you want to get into like how YouTube could have communicated, how your brand should talk with creators. I would put that at the end there, but um, I'm hold up, stop right there. I just want to call this out because I'm confused. I thought it was Creator Pod. That that logo with that is an O. There, that is absolutely 100% an O. That is not an A. That's confusing. Great point. And I was only really, Judah, that's a brilliant point. I was reading it here as Pad because of the sub. The yeah. thing. You're right. Here it looks like an O. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah, if that logo is standing on its own, I think it's pod and 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 like pod podcast. I think it's more prevalent than pad. Um, yeah. And that and then I would also say this intro is too long. I know that's crazy to say, but for people who are putting in like intros and all that, especially if there's not a lot of movement or a lot of changing, like if it was going to be this long, I would have been like creator pad, like um, um, the channel for blah 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 or what. Like it maybe needs a slogan if you're going to have it be that long. But I think your name is self um, descriptive enough that you don't need it. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Creator Pad's Creator Pod.
Oh my gosh! Uh, today we're talking about <laughs> so I'm realizing that a lot of the content they've been posting and are currently posting and ha even have posted in the last few years, like it's uh, it's been up there for a while, it's all now getting demonetized out of nowhere. And this isn't just like a calm demonetization for like a select. Okay, I think we got the gist of the video. It's it's for creators. I would have uh, led with this, like like if you're like um. If you swore in your past videos, they're all going to get demonetized. Like the, the, I, I would have just led with like what the change is and what this video is going to help people think about differently to like not lose money. Um, Bro, their... I wish I would have taken that hook. If you swore in your last videos, you're all going to get demonetized. Like, <laughs> that is like what? Huh? Yeah. Like oh, I'm into it, bro. <laughs> like I like exactly, that. <laughs> exactly. And then I don't know if you have a short. I like the gradient. I like the gradient here. Um. But yeah, this is like a lot of like, yeah, uh, I, I love to see it. It's it's all about the creator community. And um, yeah, should we watch one short before we go on? Or do you think we've roasted this yeah, one enough? Yeah, let's look form? at a short. I'm curious to see. Being that we're in a recessional period in our world. Wait, wait, let's watch a different one because we this is about the same topic. Hold on. Okay. Maybe the whole next motion is to do major feature films on YouTube with YouTubers and they spend millions of dollars on this like okay so this is like a clip from an existing podcast like i would really think about like when you're cutting to somebody put it um on them fully don't have it in the middle because like this seems like it was almost like auto generated crop some tools do that on production because they'll make it back you know it's interesting to look at because like, again i'm with you on the whole See, that's yeah, the right uh, the way to cut to and everything him. they're yeah. always going to be copy. that middle so shot either should have been like a, a sandwich top bottom or it should have just been this what we're yeah. seeing here a hundred percent yeah, exactly. Maybe the whole next motion is to do major feature films on YouTube with YouTubers, and they spend millions of dollars on on production because they'll make it back. Yeah, I think the future of YouTube, like I, I would have like tried to. I know this is tough because like you're cutting from an existing conversation, but there's something here about like um like will will the next like if you if you want to go down that route of like feature films like. You know, will the next like um you know uh like Oscar winners be on YouTube or something that like especially it's award season you want to like latch onto that search interest like um could have made it a bit like stronger of a hook but uh, I love the content of the channel and what you're going after. You're, it sounds like we're all uh, in this together, so I'm gonna yeah. keep following you along. I'm, I'm just I, I throw a hot take in there, John. Yeah, I think there's sometimes we I, this is just my take. I think yeah. sometimes creators look for the easy route of cutting long form to shorts, right? Mm, that yeah. short was probably what 15 words. Yeah. It it you could have reshot that on camera well and, and well extended said. it a little bit to make it much richer. Like well I know said. it's an easy route to just take that and just cut it, but if you're saying 15 words with not that much depth to it, just take that script restate it on because you're the only person who talked like it's not like you needed to have that guest interaction at all like it was just you talking add on add some more flavor to it and extend it and then you have a dope piece of content that yeah. honestly could be done 10 minutes 10 minutes you could knock that out um Beautiful and make said. it a much better short Be yeah that's 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 really well said if you could reshoot it and it's a clip from a dialogue based like you know either podcast format or like talk show format that's probably the move and then you could splice in b-roll uh judah you're a yes ending to a t i love it this is this is uh the, the, i i i totally agree with that uh and yeah, i think that's a yeah. good point to all right i think we roast you creator pad all right here's another one um <clears throat> ever since i was a kid i've logged on to america okay so this is interesting so this is a 55 second video uploaded as a long as a horizontal so not as a short so immediately i i think that you're going to be missing out on a ton of distribution in the short feed it's unlisted because... it's unlisted what's up with this where is this no he sent it as a roast as a video to roast oh okay yeah 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 as a specific video to roast so we're, we're getting the the pre uh publication roast so this is actually interesting. <laughs> they can make the changes that we suggest we should do oh that's a dope concept we'll talk about that later okay go ahead. yeah oh people can submit unlisted videos oh that's hot that's hot Wait, let's <laughs> you sound like will smith post. from rewind 20 2018 <laughs> oh that's hot i love it i think that's a dope concept go ahead that's, that, that's interesting because then you can actually implement judah i think we're, we're on to something here yeah um, yeah all 
Okay, but Connor Duncan. All right, let's 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 take a look at this short disguise as a long. Okay. Ever since I was a kid, I've loved going to America. Whether I was going to Disney World in Orlando or seeing the Empire State Building in New York City, I absolutely... The audio feels a bit muffled. It feels almost softer than some of the sound effects of like the honking in New York City and all that stuff. The font, I'm just dissecting everything I'm seeing right now. The font is mm -hmm. too thin. Um, it's like, uh, I would have maybe given it a white background instead of this black background. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, th I think there's, 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 there's some room to be, uh, improved here in terms of like right. audio and then also understanding the subtitles, but let, let's keep going with actual. And, hold, 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 and, and just to throw one thing on that. I just, uh, I just want to see this. It, it, a lot of this is just my opinion and what I think would make it more compelling, but it's like. He started the video with like ever since I was a kid, he he loved to go to Disney World or something like that. Where when you enter this video, if I'm if I'm consuming this, I want to see you as a kid, your baby face, your your old camera footage, something that communicates that to me. Right now, I see three guys in the car, one staring at me in a weird way, one looking off camera. You're telling me this story. I'm distracted by this. Like like my my. I'm looking at the scene, figuring out what's going on while you're trying to put fill me, put this story in my head that I'm like, these are two different storylines to me right now. And you starting it off with you as a kid. That's cool. That's cute. Like, I'm going to stop scrolling. I'm going to watch a little bit more because who, who doesn't love kids? Like, I think that intro could have just been way hotter than this. A hundred percent. I would say also. Get your camcorder or whatever you had as a kid. I actually just did this recently. My mom brought my camcorder from my childhood. And then I actually have it right here. I got these cords that you put into your camera. Just upload the footage and digitize it. Mm. And exactly what Judah said, like there'll be moments where you want to tell a story. What is going on here? This has no like part, like significance of the story. Three dudes do into a car. I don't even know who two of the other people are in, in, in respect to the story. Like, bring that footage like make it like you know like like square and 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 add that nostalgia to your video and immediately like i think you'll have something that most people won't but um yeah and this is all changes that would have dramatically impacted your six seconds and maybe can still do that because you haven't uploaded it yet but let's keep going However, there's one thing that I never got to experience there, which was what it was like to be a college student. We've all heard the stories of what you know. All right. I think this basically, like, to a T, exemplifies what you should not do, what we were talking about last time, which is stock B-roll. Like, the, 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 you, you know, I, I'm going to say, like, there's, there's almost, like, three buckets of, like, B-roll. One is the B-roll where you film yourself, like the Matt Diavella, the one that we talked about that, you know, is definitely higher lift, takes more work. Um, and then the other extreme is this. It's like stuff that looks so staged that it's like it turns people off. The middle route of that, if you can't film your own stuff or like maybe like you got to get a video out, is fine stock imagery where you don't see faces. Right. And, and, and that's right. something where like I, I don't think enough people talk about. But like think about this. It's like if you see like maybe you like can match the skin tone to like somebody like, you know, if you're talking about school and they're like writing on like a notepad, like people can assume maybe it's you. But at the very least, you're not introducing a new face, i.e. a new character to your story. So mm -hmm. think about that in terms of your B-roll. Because right now I'm like, oh, this is like I feel like I'm watching a uh, 1990s company recruitment video. <laughs> Right. by seeing this right and Think honestly like, like you know there there's two things that i see as an opportunity for a lot of creators one shoot more always take your phone with you it, when you're out at these universities when you were there think in the future like man this would just be if you don't touch this footage for a year that's fine just capture these moments that you know like oh i want to tell this story later and archive it somewhere yes two, honestly like a simple win for me would just be like, oh, man, there's a local, there's all these local community colleges by me, whatever. Like, let me just get a meet standing in front of three different ones so I can cut one, cut two, cut three, and cut between three of them. And immediately the production value is so much higher based on 30 minutes of work. A hundred percent. I think so it's something I did when I was at YouTube and Instagram. I just try to get little moments that... Uh, now, I actually, um, over the holidays, I took my hard drive and organized an entire folder of like, yeah, uh, like little moments from like my being on, on the set of YouTube Rewind 2014, um, right. being there on my first day, 
like 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 getting my nuclear hat at Google yep. um into like Facebook's headquarters when I started Instagram like those are things that like you at school you as a kid like are going to speak way way strong more more strongly than seeing a uh, stock imagery mm-hmm. so 1000% one, 1, agree with you too. From the insane to XL flat parties to the 50,000 seater sold out football games, it's a totally different the audio I, can hear. I could ever comprehend and I want it. So that's why me and my friends, Glenn and Duffy, are here today. We're going to become students for the day at the largest what university. What was that footage in the earlier? United States. <laughs> What's that? I think that was like a university shot or something. Where is the, see, he led with the like stock <laughs> and then followed it up with the in real life footage. That should have came way earlier. Way earlier. Like, if, if we're gonna throw in any B roll, which I don't like, like that, like, like for one, it's clashing because now you have all these different types of shots. It's clashing in my opinion. But I, I, because of retention, I lead with the best. Lead with the yes. best. Lead with yes. the best. You might yes. get away with that at the end, but just lead with the best you have to offer, and then throw in the stuff. Like if you're like, oh, I don't have this much, well, use it first. Always use it first. Use it like that's that's how I see it. A hundred percent. And then I also think about what did Disney World have to do with this video? <laughs> now that we go that's through cool. it, I'm like, that feels like such a departure. It's like, yeah, there's these things you couldn't like experience, but Disney World now. I thought you were going to Disney World, um, but now that I go through the video and I take a closer look at the headline, it's just the intro feels mismatched uh, for even more reasons that we talked about. So. I think we're here. Largest university in the United States, the University of Central Florida. There's only one problem. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but we're like not it. actually students. However, in order like to it. say that we've had a full college experience, we need to do a few things. Number one, we need to go to a class. Number two, we need to go to a college football game. Number three, we need to end up at a flat. Let's see how this goes. Now, now, whoa. Where's the rest of the video? <laughs> oh, okay. So, like, I'm disappointed because, one, this is unfinished. Like, we got, we're getting into well, the story. To be fair, I do want to be fair. I was just reading his submission. He said that this is an intro for a video I did with me and some friends to become college students for the currently we're unsure what to make the title and thumbnail. So any thoughts would be appreciated. Um, yeah. So it's just an intro. So, so, so okay, we don't good. have to do it. Okay. That's wonderful. Why Thank why you for clarifying that. And then the part, well, one, that's a, that's a big intro, but, uh, but that's fine. Um, I think that I'm d- disappointed because there was this like, like um, what, what's the word, this pattern that I was expecting. Oh, get into a get into a university, get into a game, get into a frat party. But there's no cut to a frat party. And I'm like, wait, yeah. did, now I'm like, ah, oh, they're gonna make me watch to the end and not get into the frat party and all this kind of stuff. Like, I wanna see the frat party. I wanna know this this is legit. I wanna see like you showed me you achieving goals, but then you cut that out. I'm like, to me, I'm a little jarred by that. Totally. I, I'd say the other thing is like, where did that checklist come from? It was introduced like so out of the blue that, yeah, maybe those are three stereotypical things. Like you go to class, you go to a party, you go to a game. But I think it would have been more powerful if like, yeah, I'm here at University of Central Florida and I'm asking students, what do I need to do to have a college experience? And, and maybe this helps like refine the title, which I know you're having feedback on. Like I crammed four... I, four years of college into 24 hours, mm. you know, and you go around like the video starts, like you're like asking people on the street, like on campus, like in the quad, um, wh- what are the three things you think I need to experience? And then everyone's like, go to a football game, go to a football game. Well, you got to go to class. You got to go to class. Oh, you got to go to a party. You got to go to a party. And then like within like a really quick cut, you're like, so it sounds like, in order to have the most like college experience in 24 hours with limited time, I need to do X, Y, and Z, right? Then it's like, okay, like it's almost like it's been like, like told, like your, your journey has been set up and you're about to go experience it. And then I would have found a way to like, your friends feel a bit like disconnected with the story because I'm focused on you. 
Yeah. Like, are they going to help you go there? Are you each going to like one person's going to go to class? One person's going to go to a party. One person is going to go to um, the game. Like, what is the role of those two people? If not, they kind of like, you know, sh should like it should be you in the beginning and then they come into the video versus all three of you in the beginning all the time. Because then again, you're, you're confusing the user in terms of if you in terms of who's who. Yeah. Um, yeah. I got to find this creator real quick, but uh yeah, yeah. So like, I like, did John? Did they say they didn't go to college or they didn't go to that university? What was it? The, they the they didn't go to college, I believe, is what they said. Yeah. Yeah. So like, just as a title, if he's looking for title ideas, like, I think it's super compelling to say dropouts experience college for the first time. Like, that, that's like good. That. That's yeah. great. And, that's and so great. like, I'm looking at it like, okay, as a person viewing it. I didn't go to college. Like I, I dropped out. So like, yeah. as like, what is college like? You know, like, what, like as a dropout or as a person who never experienced, like you're thinking, like, oh, what, what is college like? Let, let's, let's do more of this. So, like, I think that that's interesting, and that could be baked into your storyline. And to your point about the footage, I have to find this creator. Let me type it in real quick. Watch versus or he he does a good job of when he brings in guests to his video. Mm. He um he has he gives them like they are capturing footage too. Mm -hmm. Um, so like, I think like, uh, I'm, once I find this example, I'll drop in the chat, but his name is Shervin, um, mm -hmm. S H E R V I N Shervin yeah. shares. And so like, I think some of you might know, uh, I think I've seen his stuff on IG Shervin. Oh, yeah. yeah he, he does some dope stuff and he like, he, like, if you go to that Apple watch video, he, you, you know, you know, Tejas. Uh, you I, you definitely know Tejas. Yeah, yeah, I saw him the other night uh, at uh, Eric's Pizza Party. Yeah. Oh, awesome! This is well, a real in that video. And so, what like, Tejas is capturing footage with him waking up to meet Shervin, things like that. It's just super interesting. Like, they go to test their VO2 max, and but just having all these people capturing footage from their perspectives and angles is super interesting. I think back to like the Mr. Beast videos where he'll do like this big event, but like all these different characters in there are capturing footage that just makes it so much better. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I, I think there's definitely things you can pick up there. Um, let's go to the final roast of the day. Here's one that was submitted. Um, we could take a look at the intro. Easily made with stealing from but, oh, here's this is interesting. Spending 500 days making vo uh, uh, Valorant's laziest knife. Um, I assume that's a gaming reference. Do you, do you, are you a gamer, Judah? I'm, I'm, I'm not a gamer. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, I retired 10 years ago, sadly. <laughs> okay, here you go. The ego. No before I start this, is there anybody else you want to uh, like before we end on this one? Yeah, say that again. Yeah, any any other folks like uh, but we, we, I want to make sure our last one is strong. I think this one could be a good one uh, to go into because it looks like a lot of graphics and and editing and yeah. uh, all that. Let's let's do it. Let's do it. Let's, let's do take it. a look at their shorts too. Um, see what they got going on there. Yeah. And I'm, I want to give a shout out to the Goth Farm. This live stream is pumping me with so many shorts ideas. Can't wait to follow this with some script writing. Amazing. Amazing. And by, by the way, like what's really cool is we're seeing people pop in from one uh, live stream to the other as we do our third one. Um, if we didn't get to you guys, like Hidden Guild, I see you. Um, plan Your One Life, I see you. Like if we don't get to you on this one, um, stay active in the, in the chat. And then also we'll put out posts before our next roast make mm -hmm. sure that you're on those because we'll start off every session like now we're in like we're an hour 30 minutes in um, but we always start off for the people who weren't here at the beginning with stuff that was pre-submitted um so we see you guys and um and uh yeah we'll, we'll make sure to get to it but let's go to s tech spending 500 days making uh valorant's laziest night here we go knife you see my many in the ego knife is seen by many in the Valorant community to be a cosmetic lazily made by stealing from the design of pre levels. Immediately, like like your voice is overpowered by the background music. Um, but good editing. Like I think you like came in there and like immediately you like as somebody who's not as familiar with the game, like you explained something that like oh that knife is like the like designed lazily and and the highlighting and and showing that the community is like I, I'm realizing that this is something that's talked about which is good. 
They're so used in game skins and changing barely anything. However, to me, it's this in itself that gives it significance. But what could warrant spending possibly weeks of my life building a knife that's. I'm I'm trying to capture maybe it's part of the game. Like who are those people from the intro? Hmm. Good point. And, and also I was actually surprised, like, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe gamers or that that's a great question. I, I'm I'm okay. I am also confused. Like who are these people? And yeah, maybe, yeah. Yeah, maybe it's connected to the game or something. Like, I just try to balance it out because sometimes I might not know the reference. So, <laughs> yeah. but but yeah, this is a cool edit. Cool edits are cool, but they also have to t enhance the story. So, like, I'm I don't know who these people are. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think healthy healthy Tiffany is saying, "Dang, this editing is top tier." Like that's that's why I kind of like caught my eye. Definitely like is 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 solid. And then yeah, probably these are gamers. Like I'm noticing like their uniforms like. Ah. but either way judy your point is well taken like it's not clear and then also like i think like there's room for like um like you come in at 10 seconds like i, I didn't actually realize it's going to be something where we we see you on screen maybe that could have come sooner but so far my biggest issue with it is this noise level like i cannot hear and i would even add more text um the ego knife is seen by many in the valorant community to be a cosmetic lazily made yeah, so like lazily made, like I I would have even put like lazy, like like the word lazy needs to be emphasized um, before you get into these creatives. Again, I would have like even like given it more of a beat, like like one of the the laziest like, and I'm like thinking even is even laziest word is like um like laziest knife, like it just doesn't make sense to me, you know, like maybe like mo most poorly designed or like. I yeah. get where you're going at, but like laziest knife, just hearing that and putting yeah. that, especially in the title, um, is confusing. So maybe other ideas will come up as I see this, but I, I think that's probably the wrong word choice. By stealing from the design of previous in game skins and changing barely anything. However, to me, it's this itself that gives it significance. But what could warrant spending possibly this in itself that gives it significance? I think you could have been higher contrast. Most people think that absolutely no thought went into designing this knife. But for me, I think the most thought went into it. And here's why. Something like that. And I'm like, wow, this guy's about to give a take that is so different from his peers and all that. Almost like, you know, we were talking about, um, you know, like the, the which one was it? The YouTube monetization update video right. where right. it was Creator. like everyone yeah. giving a take. And I'm like, is this video, if it, the video is not first, is it going to be different? Is it going to give me right. more content? So right. um, I like how you set it up and great editing uh, so far. I'm, 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 I think your motion graphics are superb. Weeks of my life, building a knife that's seen as subpar by the world around me. Hello, um, it's Saturday the 12th. I figured I'd just kind of film this, show you what's going on. Actually today, someone wanted me to make a custom knife for them. It did definitely pique my interest because like I- Holy moly, wait, I think that's a detail. It's like you're making the knife physically. Like, I thought we were in the game and all that. This is like a whole nother level that I would have brought into the 30 seconds of the intro. And let's, let's just skip around. Um, so it seems like, like, here we go. No, no, he's not making it. No, he is. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Why is it 500 days and we're at day five, <laughs> seven? Yeah. Like, well, hold up. Dude, th these shots should have been in the intro. Yeah. This is another level of work and dedication. First of all, kudos yeah. to you. I mean, you have a lot of craftsmanship, both like in like, you know, um, you like with physical like uh, uh, like crafts as well as like editing. If you edited this video yourself, like it's just. Um... Where like you kind of like cool it in the region you want. Well, I'm unapologetic about that analogy. I do. OK, I think it's completely lost on 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 the viewer that you are actually physically making this knife. And I think there's two things going on. Like, yes, you said making Valorant's laziest knife, but um, a lot of people, I think, especially with your intro, assume you maybe made that in the game, right? You made that digitally. And so I would have like really tightened up that intro and like set up like, here's like why it's not the laziest knife. And like to prove this, I made it in person. Um, but yeah, I think I could have used a lot of work. And then Judah, your point about like, how is it day seven? And we're, 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 <laughs> we're literally at the end of the video here. Day seven, five hundred. Some, some. We, there must be more context in the video, and 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 you have to be like, 
you have to be an incredible storyteller if this is going to be a good video. And and yeah. I believe you are. I've seen the editing. But, like, if this is a, about a 10-minute video where you're making a knife, I you, you got to be a good storyteller. You got to be a good storyteller. You really, <laughs> you really have to because I think th there's only so much creativity you can have. Like, unless you're, like, showing, I was struggling here on getting this material and this. Like, like I, I'm curious to know what this whole story was that took 10 minutes to show. Yeah, and look at the comments. Agree with that. Um, I assume they were making it, or I, I, I thought it was, he was going to do, show a game. The title made me think it was a prop and anima animation. Not gonna lie, one person does say I assume they were going to be making it from the title, um, but I think the fact that the comments are split kind of show that like mm -hmm. uh, people don't understand. And I, and I would say like let's forget about the title for a second. Um, your intro after I click on the title gives me no inclination that you're going to make it physically um so and 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 uh no i don't know i i'm seeing the title thumbnail let me see s tech i guess it does yes here you are making mm -hmm. it so yeah that does that is good context but um either way like then i think it's even worse because i'm seeing it in the title i'm seeing in the thumbnail that i'm getting into the intro and i almost feel like clickbaited because i'm like wait where where is this even shown there that you're about to make it and if i don't go past the first 30 seconds which you know a lot of times like you'll lose 30 to 40 percent of the audience mm -hmm. um then you're like not even getting to the point but uh I, dude kudos to you uh um as s tech like i think you have a lot of talent here just about putting it things in the right order and uh it's wow look at all the stuff you've made in person Yeah. Look at it. Yeah, I even think like to Judah, your point that could have been a short. Mm -hmm. Let's make the RJ exploit for the past. I mean, like it's just things like that that are just I'm easy. Low hanging Let's fruit. Let's make the RJ exploit for the past so, week. I've been working on a model yeah. to make this build happen. Now I just need to separate the parts, wait for everything to process, and then load all the files under the 3D printer. It? Even separating it into three batches, each one will take over 12 hours. First we have the three blade segments along with the base handle. And then I printed out all of the small layered segments. I just this had to remove great. supports and clean everything up, and then it was all ready. I started with a few select parts that needed to be glued before any sanding could happen. I also cut a metal dowel to be used for extra strength inside the blade. With these steps done, I could start sanding the parts. Although a few areas needed manual sanding... Okay. This could be shorter, but overall, like, first of all, don't underestimate how long that takes to get one word um, uh, subtitles. Like, that is that is very hard, and I think, right. like, looks great. I, I would have just shortened this, and I think we could have gotten to the ending and the results sooner, but um, right. S-Tech, good, good editing, and I think we're, we, we've seen a lot of different creators throughout this live stream with different strengths, like um, great uh, anim animators, great uh, storytellers, great... Um, editors and craftsmen so it's it's very cool to see the different uh, people coming out and, and sharing their stuff on the slide right right yeah and, and like i was saying it's like just the low-hanging fruits i see so many opportunities where it's like if you have a long form like i i have no problem redoing long form videos as shorts and repackage it and redo it differently so like you have that long form video where you're making the knife you could probably take some of that footage and do the same thing as a short. Um, and let's see which one takes off. Short takes off, pin it, pin the other one as a comment, say, oh, man, if you want to see the full story, go here or something like that. I just think that that's just such a low-hanging fruit. And knowing that it's a game, I feel like that's going to end up in a lot of people's shorts feed if, 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 yeah. if it's a game. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. I think maybe we, we just set our own record for how many channels and videos we went through, but a minute or sorry a minute an hour 42 here um, <laughs> seeing a lot of people who i saw from the beginning which is very cool but judah it's a pleasure as always uh, i hope you guys enjoyed this this is um just something that we've seen like really resonate with the community and you guys like both both before during and after in terms of people submitting and having interest so judah is there a link or is there a place that if people want to share their stuff like we can keep them in mind for next month's um bro hey. like how can people stay in, in touch in addition to following tube buddy um yeah. on youtube on twitter on all the places that you could uh check us out right so in the description of this video is a link if you click the link you have the opportunity to submit your channel uh we ask you a bunch of questions about like if you're a long form creator short predominantly creator things like that just to help us filter out you know content for the specific video we're roasting um but yeah if, you, if you're interested in getting your channel 
roasted and reviewed in a hurtful, helpful way, go ahead and submit your channel. I think the I think it even says uh, submit at your own risk. But as you know, if you watch this whole video, you've seen how we're talking. Like we, we're very friendly, but we are trying to give you the information that you know some people would like to sugarcoat it and you know beat around the bush. Like we really want to help you grow because yeah. I think all the channels that we talked about today, if they just took some of the things that we talked about, implemented them in tomorrow, they're gonna see massively better performance throughout this entire year than they were gonna see if they stayed the same. 100 percent, and i think the last thing to end on is like sometimes your friends want to see you win but that sugarcoats things we're a degree removed we want to see you win right. but we're just getting to know you so we're going to keep it real so uh submit no. it your own risk i like that as a uh, as a tagline for these roads <laughs> submit it your risk awesome yeah. well thank you john thank you everybody it was fun and we're going to keep doing this let's let's, let's do it this. thank you dude always a pleasure thanks to everyone in the chat if you guys commented we'll take a note for next time we'll, we'll roast your stuff you guys are awesome thank you